quiero recibir voces aquí. Aquí en Avoito tenemos encuentros semanales donde vamos a conversar con mujeres de todo el mundo sobre propósito, melodía de procesos y gentileza. Hi everyone, how are you? I'm Karen Ross, and it's a pleasure to welcome you to Cultura G Excelencia. Here at Voito, we'll have weekly meetings where we'll talk with women from around the world about purpose, process improvement, and kindness. I'm so happy to have you joining me today, and we have some fabulous, fabulous guests to talk with. First, I want to remind you, please, to use your handbook so that you can get more information about all of our episodes and about Cultura de Excelencia and our focus, this um, series on purpose, process, improvement, and kindness. And we'll be talking to all fabulous and incredible women in lean. Today's topic, how to inspire more women to become involved with lean, como inspirar mais mulheres a adotaram o lean, and our guest today, Dorsey Sherman, who is the founder of Model Consulting, and Crystal Davis, who is the founder of the Lean Coach Inc. And more importantly, both of them are my co-founding mothers of Women in Lean, our table. So I'm super, super excited to have them here as our guest today on Cultura de Excelencia and happy to welcome them to the web series. Hi. Hello. <laughs> Hi, Dorsey and Crystal. I'm so happy that you could join us. And um, if you wouldn't mind, uh, if you could just do a quick introduction about who you are and um, what uh, you do and focus on. Crystal, would you mind to get us started? Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. I'm Crystal Davis. My company is The Lean Coach Incorporated, and I have been practicing lean since um, the late 90s, where I got my start in a manufacturing plant that was struggling to maintain good quality and on-time delivery to our customer. And our plant manager said, you know, let's learn this lean thing. Um, and we were able to make a significant improvement in about 18 months and became a model site that a lot of people came to visit. So I absolutely love Lean. Um, I love all that it um, endures in the principles and methodologies. And so I'm excited to be here to tell you about my journey and uh, as a woman in Lean and to inspire and encourage others to, um, to come on board. Thank you so much, Crystal. Dorsey? Yeah, thank you, Karen. It's so great um, to be here and have a chance to talk about women in lean, um, one of my favorite topics. So my name is Dorsey Sherman, and my company is Model Consulting, which is a French word that means pattern. Um, and that word's important to me because I work um, in two ways. Number one, I um, coach people from a lean perspective on process improvement, continuous improvement using Toyota Kata methodology and pattern is really important. So it's following this very structured four-step routine or problem solving pattern in order to achieve innovation. And then I'm also a leadership and executive coach. I work with people one-on-one -on -one for their own individual growth and development and I use an evidence-based approach of intentional change model and emotional intelligence. So I kind of have my feet in both worlds, um, but the, the common theme is um, helping people change. So um, that's it. And I'm happy to talk about getting more women into lean today. Thank you so much, Dorsey and Crystal. And uh, just before I start with our formal questions, I just wanted to say thank you for being my co-founding <laughs> mothers at Women in Lean, Our Table. And a little bit about Women in Lean, Our Table is that about two years ago, we really noticed that um, when we went to speak at conferences, when we read books, when we were at all kinds of gatherings, that although there were many women present, 
oftentimes at a conference, it was mostly men speaking. And when we went to look for lean books and articles, those were written mostly by men. And the three of us got together and we really wanted to figure out how we could raise the voices of women in lean. And we decided um, at a conference that we were at working with some other women that we would create this LinkedIn group um, about women in lean our table. And that has grown now to be about 900 women globally. And we have a lot of different tables, which is our little sub networking groups. And we have women who speak all languages. We have lots of women from Brazil. We have women from all over the world helping each other to really become more involved in lean and raise our voices. So I really just wanted to say it's totally wonderful to <laughs> with all of you to figure out how to do that, including um, having you all on this web series. So I have some first some formal questions and then some questions from the students at Voitu. So let's just get started. First, we all know that really example is the best way to inspire and guide other people to learn. So how can, what, what can we do to inspire more women? to be involved in lean, to really get their voices out there and be heard. Crystal, you want to go first? So, so I'll say for me, um, one of the things that I found very important when I was uh, very young in my career was to find advocates and to be able to have a safe space of women that I could talk to about my concerns, or issues or challenges that I had faced um, in the workplace was very pivotal to me staying the course. So, you know, for women who are in, in STEM fields, there's this constant ebb and flow of an increase in women um, coming into the field but then a steady decline of women leaving the field because mm -hmm. it's sometimes tough for women to navigate in a space that that doesn't feel uh, welcome welcoming, and so that was a big big um, uh, point of contention for me was to find other women advocates, um, and so I would be intentional about seeking out other women, and then also when I for for any male advocate you know, being able to talk with them about the challenges that I faced as a woman and then them helping to advocate on my behalf. So, so those were two things that were very important in my career um, and helped me stay the course when I experienced challenges. Yeah, I think that's a great point, Crystal, about um, having people to support you and that you can look up to for guidance and when, you know, there's few women in the field. One thing that comes to mind this, um, so most of my lean work has been in um, healthcare. I've worked in some large health systems as a um, internal lean consultant. And we had um, one of the last positions I had, we had hired a large consulting company to help us with kind of an organizational transformation and all this lean work. And one thing that this consultant said to me, she was female. She said, you know what, Dorsey, you have to bring yourself to this work. Like you have to be yourself. And that's one of the most important things you can do. And, you know, that's something Karen says all the time. And really that's the mission of Lean is to use our voices. But I think for someone starting out, Lean can be kind of intimidating. Like there's all these rules and like tools and principles and um, concepts. And it's like, well, I have to be an expert in all this in order to do lean, you know, or to be part of this work. And I just think that's not true at all. There's some very basic principles in terms of, um, you know, curiosity, understanding why things are done, understanding that process is creating outcome, that um, you don't have to be, you know, you can grasp those concepts at kind of like a primal level and not be an expert and still be really effective as a lean thinker and a lean practitioner. Um, and bring yourself and all your experiences and what you know about um, how things work and how to make changes. Like, 
it can all come together. I think she said that to me and I was just kind of like blown away. Like, yeah, I'm working so hard to be this version of what I think, you know, a lean consultant is. And it's like, really you have to be yourself. Um, so that's my thoughts on how we can inspire more women to get involved. Great. Right. Yes. And I think that's absolutely so right. And be yourself and bring your own voice. And actually as you learn more, and you speak in your own voice, that's yeah. going to give that the example for those other women. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So Absolutely. the next couple of questions, actually I'm gonna split them up because I think that, that you know, they go with uh, exactly what you were saying in the previous question. So for the next question, Crystal, I'm gonna ask you because it goes with that idea of how do you get men in leadership roles? How do you get men to act with kindness and help actually pull up women in lean, right? And notice that actually there's a lot of women practitioners, <laughs> maybe in, in your organization, or if you're inviting them to speak, you know, people to speak at conferences, how can we get men to actually kindly help raise women's voices? So that's a great question, Karen. Um, I'll say I, I've worked um, my entire career in manufacturing and I started my career in the automotive industry. So heavily male dominated space. What I would say um, to, to answer the question is um, that the first thing that you have to do, and it goes along with what Dorsey said about being yourself, is you have to establish a relationship and a connection. And I think that's just a human element. And so when you do that with with um, a, a male figure in the organization, they start to understand more about who you are and how you operate and how you show up authentically. And then once you develop that relationship and that connection, now you can determine if you have a safe space to be able to share with them, again, some of the challenges that you are experiencing and then help them uh, increase their level of awareness because sometimes, uh, you know, well-meaning people, well-intentioned people just may not be paying attention and may not have that level of awareness to, to see that you're having a different experience that might be challenging, um, whereas they just may see things as normal. And so it starts with developing a relationship and a connection, then helping them to become more aware of what you're actually experiencing and then third, and this is just personal for me, I don't want anybody thinking that they need to save me. What I'm really looking for mm -hmm. is advocacy and an allyship that said, that helps me to navigate the space. Not that I can't manage the space, but it's good to have support. And it's good to have others to recognize that something is not right. And so those are the three things that I've learned over my career to do. Um, I used to, when I was younger, um, and before Dorsey, we we um, recognize we started to expand our thoughts around in lean around focusing on people, um, where it was really really just process focused. Um, I struggled, and um, I can remember being in a room and having a male colleague speak up for me, and he did so in a way that was the best he knew how which I appreciate it. I totally appreciate it. But then I had to have a conversation with him and I, and I said to him, I said, I really appreciate you, you know, uh, stepping up and coming to my defense uh, in the situation. However, in a way you kind of robbed me of my power. Mm. You robbed me of my power at the table. And so we talked about that because I didn't want him to stop being an ally but I also needed to, to, to help him understand how he could help me. And it's an evolution. It's not something that you know right out the back. It's an evolution of learning. And, and really it starts with what kind of relationship do you have with the person? So that would be my answer to that question. Crystal, those are such wise words mm -hmm. that are going to be helpful for so many. So thank you for for sharing that very uh, thoughtful wisdom from your own uh, personal experience and and background. Now, Dorsey, mm -hmm. um, how do you think that uh, lean, adopting lean can help women to solve more problems and actually take a more strategic look about what they're doing 
and their career. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think one of the things I love about lean thinking is just this structured approach to problem solving. I mean, to really specifically, I mean, my expertise is with Toyota Kata, which is, you know, number one, understand the direction. Number two, understand your current condition, set a target and experiment forward. I mean, those four steps can literally be applied to anything. And I do apply them when I'm in like a kind of thorny and complicated situation, regardless of work related or not. It's like, okay, that clarity around what are we really trying to do here? Like, what is the goal? Where are we now? Where do we want to be next? Like, for me, it just boils down the essence because I think it's really easy for our brains and all of our, I mean, we have like over 100 cognitive biases um, that we're battling inside our brain and we have all these opinions and assumptions and stories and all the stuff in our head. Lean really takes you down to these, um, the most important questions. And when you ask those, you can really get a lot of clarity and it's a structure for experimentation. So once you kind of set this direction of where you wanna go, what do we wanna try next? How do we wanna um, you know, take one step forward? How can we remove this obstacle? It's a whole mindset around problem solving that I think is really helpful versus our typical sort of more natural approach is like, I need to find the one answer, the perfect answer that has, or I need to plan for um, the execution of this project for six months. We need to do six months of planning and make sure we get everything. And then we'll, you know, at, at day one, we'll execute it and it's gonna be perfect versus this whole mindset around experimentation and learning and striving um, for innovation. So that's how it helps me, like, is that kind of, foundational mindset of how to approach things because it makes me feel like I think the other thing is it makes you feel like okay I don't have to have all the answers I don't have to have all this figured out I have this structure to help me kind of iterate my way forward so those are kind of the ways I like to use lean and how it's a helpful approach to help me think through things I think that is uh, totally totally going to make a huge difference for so many women and it ties into actually our last question, which I'm going to ask both of you to answer both of mm. which, which has uh, elements from both of the two previous questions. There's a lot of women and we see it in women in lean all the time. Mm. And we see it in uh, many different instances that women are fearful mm. about mm. the whole lean journey. They're fearful about speaking up and raising their voice you know, whether it be in a work situation, in a conference situation, in a meeting situation, how could, what can we say to women who are afraid to raise their, their voice and afraid to take that next step on their, on their lean journey? I mean, one thing that whenever I feel like whenever I'm in a group setting and I feel intimidated about speaking up or, you know, maybe I'm the only woman or the direction of the conversation is going one way and I have something to say that's kind of against the grain. Something I always think about is what about the people who are can't speak up or what about the people who aren't here or what about, I mean, in the case of lean, it's often, what about, you know, the nurses, the frontline workers, they're not here. You know, how can we speak for them and advocate for often? I mean, what I think it's like, it's not any individual's fault. This is the process that is designed this way that is creating these outcomes. So that's what I think about in terms of bravery is like, okay, this isn't about you and like, y you know, your personal fear about how you're going to be perceived. It's our job to speak up for other people who aren't at the table. So, that helps me kind of get some courage and bravery to speak up in hard situations. I love that, right? Is instead of focusing on yourself, focusing mm -hmm. on helping others. And really, isn't that what Lean is, is all about, right? Not focusing yeah. on yourself, focusing on making things better for others. Totally fabulous. Crystal, what do you think? Yeah, I absolutely agree with Dorsey. Like when I, when I, whenever I would get fearful about things, I would think about the fact that it's my duty Right mm -hmm. to speak for others, but but here's something else that I mm -hmm. that I I, I uh, help that I do to help women 
it's it's I serve in a mentor and an advisor, a coach capacity, mm -hmm. whether it's an official relationship or not. And uh, and so I start with um, helping them to identify what is the source of the fear? Mm -hmm. Because I know that these women know what they're doing. They know what they're talking about and they have something wonderful to share. And so if I can help them identify that source of the fear, then I might say to them, well, what's the worst thing that can happen if you speak up? And then when they realize that the worst thing that could happen is somebody disagrees with them, well, okay, well, that, that's life, right? That happens. And so I, I then will encourage them to own their seat at the table, to raise their voice because their voice gives power, as Dorsey mentioned, to someone who doesn't feel like they have a voice. And so it's a matter of identifying that source of fear, you know, uh, getting to the point where it's like, you know what, this really isn't so bad. And then giving them the courage to, to and the inspiration to know why their voice is so powerful to share. Mm -hmm. I love it. And I think that has really been one of the, the best things about women in Lean Our Table, right? Absolutely. That Absolutely. We have each yeah. other as support. We have women who are farther along on the journey. We have women who are the same part, but we can support each other. And there's that strength in numbers and always knowing that, oh, well, <laughs> even if well, the worst happens and someone disagrees, we have each other to to support us and that we can look outside of ourselves and realize it's so important to do this and help each other overcome our fear. Yeah, Karen, could I add one more thing to that? Of course. I think uh, a lot of um, lean so-called experts, you know, when you go hear people speak or the people that are writing the books, um, there is an element of intimidation because it seems so complicated and like they're such experts and they're like bringing all these tools and theories and ideas. And it's like, I kind of want to say like, this isn't rocket science, you know, like, can we just like bring down the, these expect, you know, cause it's like engineering people or, you know, master of science and engineering and like people with all this kind of schooling or black belt. I mean, even that term black belt, really means like, oh, well, you're like this super smart person. And so it seems there's not a place for me or, you know, I don't have the qualifications or, but it's like, really, I, I, I feel like we have a role to kind of break that down, that mistake down to be like, listen, this is a lot of it is kind of common sense, you know, and the more we can talk about lean in those terms and, encourage people, you know, what are your ideas? Like, okay, this is what we're trying to do. We're trying to get this outcome with fewer resources or whatever it is, like, um, you know, add more value to the customer, create a better experience by improving this process. Like, there's a lot of ways to do that where you don't need to be a black belt. Um, and that's one of the reasons I like the simplicity of the Toyota Kata approach. It was just like, it's just so bare bones and to me effective and accessible. You know, it kind of breaks down these um, walls around. It's not mystique, but it's just like this air of, um, I don't know, expertise that you have to have that I don't believe in necessarily. Yes. Right. And, and I think that also uh, Boito has a, a summit every year called P Summit. And uh, last year, uh, in my keynote speech at that summit, I said, really, what do we need to do to become better at lean? It's practice, 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 practice. Yeah. There's so mm -hmm. many opportunities to do that. And as women, I think to get over that fear, we gain confidence from doing. And it's practice, practice, practice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Practice, right? All right, so I'm going to switch gears a little bit. And I'm going to have three quick questions from Voito's students that they've sent in. So we love to answer questions from students. And I'm just going to go uh, back and forth. So I'm going to start with Dorsey. So Dorsey, how can women learn and align their purposes of following lean philosophy, even when they don't feel like they have that necessary support? Mm. Yeah, I mean, I think there are opportunities for improve. I mean, in the end, all we can do is um, model the behavior that we want to see. 
-hmm. So there are all kinds of opportunities. Just work with yourself with, with your, I mean, there are within your email, within your calendar, within how you manage your day or your week, there are um, all kinds of opportunities for improvement. Um, and we are all, regardless of our level of responsibility, we're leaders in our own lives and we have influence around the people around us. So things like staff meetings, I mean, um, you know, huddles, things within our area of control and expertise, there's all kinds of opportunities to improve and to ask things like, who is the customer of this process? You know, um, and what do they need? And, and how can I be more effective at adding value? Like, um, and of course at home, there's a million examples of, you know, our kitchens or, you know, our grocery shopping, whatever it is um, of how to kind of practice that improvement, um, you know, mindset and, and to get better within the areas where we can control. And I would, I would say one more thing around kind of mindset and principles to be curious, to be humble, um, to ask lots of questions. I mean, those are all kind of um, foundational ways of thinking. And, and we have, unlimited opportunities to practice that in every conversation. Yes, I absolutely agree. I learned on my laundry process, right? No yeah, need laundry. <laughs> we think waiting is a waste, right? Yeah. Okay, Crystal, let's say you're in an organization. Actually, you happen to be a leader and a lean leader. How can you as a woman encourage other women to pursue continuous improvement? Absolutely. So I think first and foremost, as a leader, it's important to seek out people. So don't just wait for people to ask you to get in, to how they can get engaged. And then I think to Dorsey's point, simplify and demystify um, you know, the technical aspects. Just start with the work that you do on a daily basis and where you might find challenges and think about how you might do it differently or better and invite others to collaborate with you on that. So that, that would be, um, you know, what I would recommend to a leader is that you have to start seeking people out and then giving them or making them aware that they have the autonomy to actually improve their work. Mm -hmm. um, and then the second thing, which is which is very important, is to to for a leader is to have an awareness of aspects of their culture that may not invite people to share openly problems that they find and or question how things are done. So if you if you're a leader, you got you have to check in on, um, you know, does our culture support people who speak up about a problem and encourage that in a way that gets them involved in solving the problem? So I think it's just a matter of engagement. The leader has to be focused on intentional engagement to encourage uh, other women to participate. I absolutely love that. And I the last question actually goes with this, and I'm going to ask both of you to answer briefly. So what, what techniques can we use to develop people aligned with the purpose of continuous improvement and diversity in a company? And I think that pulls directly from the yeah. last uh, question. So Crystal, I'm going to ask you to answer first, and then Dorsey, if you don't mind. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I think that, um, you know, it's just continuing to to make space for people who have different ideas, who have different approaches um, so that they feel included in, in, in the process. I mean, it's, it's no different than, um, you know, levels of engagement. It's making sure that people feel that they're welcome, that it's a psychologically safe environment for them to participate mm -hmm. and that, you know, their idea ideas whether implemented or not, are at least heard and taken seriously. And then I'll say lastly, if you see that people aren't engaged, then inviting them to be engaged in the process. I, th I think that's just the essence is you have to meet people where they are and let them know that they're valued. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. Dorsey? Well, just to echo, and, and Crystal started with this, it's all about relationships. Yeah. So engagement is and satisfaction and discretionary effort and turnover, it all comes back to relationships between people and their 
direct leaders and their bosses. So um, the more you can do to um, get to know and care for people on just a really basic human level, asking how are you, asking let's have coffee, um, um, having them set the agenda instead of you setting the agenda, those form relationships which leads to engagement and then opportunities to um, involve people in all the needed work that we have to do around continuous improvement. Absolutely. Absolutely. Wonderful, insightful, and such helpful advice um, from both of you. It's a joy and a pleasure <laughs> to work with both of you in raising the voices of uh, women in lean. And I think that so many women will be less fearful now that they have such practical ideas of what they can do. So um, before we end our episode today, I'm going to uh, ask each of you to say a few uh, closing words and comments in summary. So Dorsey, if you don't mind to go first. Oh, sure. I, I mean, my summary would be speak up and be yourself. And, um, and we need more women and no, more voices to contribute um, to the work of making our organizations better places to be. Um, and everyone is welcome. And I think, um, I guess I just end with that. <laughs> <laughs> everyone is welcome. Right? Yes. Everyone is yes. welcome. And Crystal. Yeah, I would just um, encourage you to, if you don't think that your voice matters, I would just encourage you to understand that you are uniquely designed and authentically made. And so whatever you have to offer is uniquely a gift that God gave to you to share with others. So don't hesitate. Don't worry about how receptive they are. You just do your part and share and, and feel welcome and make a space for yourself. And then the last thing I'll say is it kindness, it, it costs nothing to be kind. Yeah. So when you help other people in sharing your idea, whether they take it or not, right? Just like children, right? You give your children advice. They may take it. They may not. It's okay. <laughs> yeah. right? Just do your part and be kind and help one another. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I think that's the fabulous way to end our discussion because for women in Lean Our Table, our first and most important rule, we only have two of them, are be kind. Be yes. kind to others, help them learn and develop and grow in lean and as people, and be kind to yourself. Mm -hmm. Nobody is perfect, right? Nobody needs <laughs> to be perfect. We're all learning and we can help uh, each other. So ladies, my founding mothers of, uh, co-founding mothers of Women in Lean, thank you so much for being here on Cultura G Excelencia. And if anybody would like, I'm sure that uh, they can reach out to you. Your information about how to contact you will uh, be along with the show. So thank you, thank you, thank you so much. And we'll see you at a Women in Lean get together uh, <laughs> very, very soon. Yes. Awesome. Thanks, thank Karen. You. Thank Thanks, you, Crystal. Karen. Thank you. All righty. Thanks, Doris. All right, everybody. What an inspiring episode of Cultura G Excelencia. Here's uh, the top insights that I've taken away that I want to share with you. So insight number one, you need to be yourself and raise your own voice. Establishing those relationships with other people in which you are your true authentic self is so important. Insight number two, man can <laughs> and should help women understand their power, but they should also make sure not to take over women's voices, right? Help a woman learn to speak and then let her speak her truth. Insight number three, what do I need to do? Think about what is the good? Think about the fundamental questions that we need to understand the direction that we're going in and then keep going. Number four, be inspirational. Understand that we can speak for others who can't. If we, we need to look around and see who isn't speaking in a room and then help them raise their voice. Number five, to have confidence. As Dorsey and Crystal <laughs> both said, and as I always say, practice, 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 practice. 
And number six, be kind. Be kind and give people the space they need. Be kind and give people the help they need. This gets people involved in the process. Think about how not just your feeling, but how others feel, what they need, what they would want, and invite them in to the process. Relationships are key. Build the relationships. Focus on people. Be kind to others. Be kind to yourself. And we'll be able to make great processes. Well, everybody, that's it for this week's episode of Cultura de Excelencia. Thank you so much for joining me and my fabulous guests, my co-founding Mothers of Women in Lean, Crystal Davis and Dorsey Sherman. I'm looking forward to seeing everybody next week where we're going to be talking about something that actually we touched on in this episode, using lean in your everyday life. And we'll be talking with more great women in lean. Until then, I hope you have a fabulous, fabulous week filled with purpose, process improvement, and kindness. Bem pessoal, esse foi mais um episódio do Cultura de Excelência. Muito obrigada se juntaram a mim e a Dorsey Sherman e Crystal Davis hoje. Espero ver todas vocês na semana que vem, onde vamos falar sobre como aplicar o Lean no dia a dia com mais uma mulher incrível no Lean. Até lá, espero que você tenha uma semana fabulosa e cheia de propósitos, melhoria de processos e gentileza. Tchau, tchau!